The focus of this presentation will be the naming of the alkane, alkene, and alkyne groups. These are simple organic compounds called hydrocarbons. That means they are composed of only carbon and hydrogen atoms. These are the prefixes used in naming hydrocarbons, meth, eth, probe, etc. Notice that the number of carbons increases by one with each prefix. Since the chemical formula of a hydrocarbon does not specify shape of the molecule, existence of various bonds, or the positions of the carbon atoms, a nomenclature was developed to organize these compounds. The system uses three parts in the name of each compound, the prefix, the base, and the suffix. Let's start with the alkane compounds which all end with the ending A-N-E, ane. Take, for example, this structural isomer of C7H16. Here is the proper way to name it. First, find the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. It may not necessarily be a straight line, and use the name of this chain as your base. Since our longest chain contains six single bonded carbons, it's called a hex base. Hexane becomes the base added to the suffix. Groups attached to the main chain are called substituents because they are substituted in place of a hydrogen atom. Second, number the carbons in the main chain starting with the end closest to a substituent, in this case this CH3 group right here. Here we start at the upper right corner because this places this CH3 on the second carbon atom as opposed to the fifth if we started on the lower right. We want the lowest number for the substituent position. Lastly, we must name the substituent group and its location. These groups are made by removing a hydrogen atom, as in here. We take away the ane ending and replace it with an ill ending. Methane becomes methyl, ethane becomes ethyl, and etc. In our example, we name the substituent 2-methyl. 2 for its location on the main chain, and methyl for the carbon atom with the three hydrogens. The name 2-methylhexane is the result. Next, we'll name the alkene and, alke and alkyne compounds. These are called unsaturated hydrocarbons because they contain, they contain less hydrogen than an alkane with the same number of carbon atoms. For example, C2H6 is a simple saturated hydrocarbon because it contains only single bonds. Uh, whereas C2H6, or I'm sorry, C2H4 as in here, contains a single double bond between these two carbon atoms, resulting in only four hydrogens. Alkenes contain at least one CC double bond, given by this example here. And they all end with the suffix ene, E-N-E. Alkenes with four or more carbon atoms have several isomers for each molecular formula. Take, for example, the structural isomers of C4H8. Here we have one. Here's another one. And another one. And another one. There are four possible arrangements for this one molecular formula. The names of alkenes are based on the longest carbon chains, as with alkenes. This alkene... It's part of a three carbon chain. One, two, three. Thus, we use propene as the base of the name. The substituent group methyl can only attach to the second carbon, and therefore no prefix number is needed. <laughs> methyl propene is the resulting name. The location of the double bond along the longest carbon chain is indicated by a prefix number, as in 1-butene, right here. The chain is always numbered to give the lowest number of prefix, which 
just as with the substituent groups. These two compounds have a four carbon chain with the double bond being on the second carbon, right here. One, two. They're called geometric isomers because they differ in the arrangement of their substituent groups. These isomers happen because unlike the CC single bonds, the CC double bond resists twisting in three-dimensional space. This right here is called a cis isomer. And the two methyl groups are on the same side of the double bond. This right here is called the trans isomer. And the two methyl groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. These geometric isomers have their own physical qualities and vary in chemical behavior. Alkynes are the last hydrocar hydrocarbon group covered here. They contain at least one CC triple bond, as in this compound of C6H10. And they all end with the, suf with the suffix "-ein". Being an extremely reactant group, Alkynes are not as prevalent in nature as their, hydrocarbon car as their hydrocarbon counterparts. Nevertheless, it's important to be able to name them. To name an alkyne, identify the longest, the longest carbon chain that contains the triple bond and use it as your base. The longest chain is five carbons, therefore the base added to the suffix is pentine. And last, identify... Oh, I'm sorry. Just as in alkenes, the prefix number, or the location of the triple bond, should be the lowest. Here it's two. 1, 2, location of the triple bond, 2 pentine, longest chain, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just as in alkenes, the prefix number should be the lowest, always remember that. And last, identify your substituent groups and their location in accordance to the triple bond. Here the substituent methyl group is on the fourth carbon atom. Putting everything together now, our prefix is 4-methyl. Our base combined with our suffix is 2-pentine, and therefore our compound is named 4-methyl-2-pentine. And that's how we name hydrocarbons.